this evening, we're going to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 1. The book of Ephesians and chapter number 1 uh, on Sunday mornings now for about nine weeks, something to that effect. I think this is our ninth installment <clears throat> into this series that we've been looking at out of the book of Ephesians in the first several chapters on the thought of it's all about him. And it is still all about him tonight. And you know that we've looked at all of these different things in chapter 1 and things that said they are his, but because we're in Christ, they've been deposited into our soul and into our spiritual bank account as well. We know something about verse 5, his will. We rejoice and enjoy verse 6, his grace. We have been redeemed in verse 7 by his blood. Verse 9, we know about his good pleasure. Verse 12, we understand about his glory. The last two weeks, we've been anchored down in verse number 18. Let's begin reading there and we'll get to our next uh, his thing, which is in verse 19. But let's start in verse number 18 tonight. If you found your place in Ephesians 1, 18, say amen. amen. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Tonight we're going to move on into verse number 19 and preach down through some of these chapters tonight. Out of all of the precious and divine words that we've looked at, these are great words, his blood, his grace, his will, his glory, his calling, his inheritance. These are wonderful things. But out of all the ones that we have looked at and out of all the ones that we will look at tonight, I want you to hear me and don't miss this tonight, none of these attributes of God that have been given to the church, none of them have the superlatives or the adjectives uh, associated with it like the one that we'll look at tonight. When Paul begins through the Holy Ghost to describe this next attribute of our great God, of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, he can't just use the word. He's got to add some extra sauce in with it. <laughs> He's got to add some extra words in with it because it's just too great. Watch verse number 19 tonight. Verse 19 said, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe? According to the working of his, not just power, mighty power. He describes the grace of God in verse number 6 of chapter 1 as the glory of his grace. He describes it in verse number 7 as the riches of his grace. In chapter 2 verse 4 he talks about God's love but he calls it his great love. But when it comes to the power of God... Paul almost just couldn't help himself. He couldn't just say his power is too awesome. It's too wonderful. It's too glorious. It's too extraordinary. It's too great. Maybe if he was talking about our power, he could have just said power and that would have been enough. But when it came time to describe the power of God... When it came time to describe the power of a holy God that heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. When it came time to describe the power of the God that, that you and I serve as believers, he used these adjectives. Look at verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power? Then he called it his mighty power tonight. Why does he describe it like that? Because the God I'm preaching about tonight is all powerful. I'm not talking about a weak Jesus. I'm talking about a mighty Jesus tonight. 
I'm not talking about a God, Brother Steve, that's sitting on the throne of eternity and sitting on the throne of heaven and the throne of his glory and he's sitting up there chewing his fingernails to the quick and drinking Maalocs, popping Tums and eating Xanax because his nerves are shot and tore up because he thinks that things are getting out of control and out of hand. Can I say tonight, he's not up there worried about what's going on in the economy, worried how he's going to fix it. He's not sitting up there shaking in his boots, worried how he's going to fix the southern border. He's not up there tonight getting wrinkles underneath and bags under his eyes, worried about Ukraine. He's not sitting up there tonight having to seek consultation and counsel for how to fix what's going on in the Middle East. He's not worried at all. He's not old. He ain't the old man upstairs. He's the God that has all power tonight. Jesus himself said all power. I didn't say some power. I didn't say a little power. I didn't say part of the power. Jesus said all power is given to me. And when he talked about all power, he said it was all power in heaven and in earth tonight. I don't know what you got going on, child of God. I don't know what bothers you. I don't know what troubles you. I feel like preaching. I don't know what keeps you up at night. I don't know what it is that worries you. But I'm talking about a God in the glory world that you can pillow your head on your bed tonight and know he's got it all under control. And it's not beyond his power. And it's not above his power. And it's not got out of his power. Thank God we serve a Savior that has the power tonight. I sure am glad. I sure am glad I don't serve a little G God that I have to pick up and carry around. But I'm glad I serve the big G God that he picks me up and he carries me around tonight. I'm glad I don't got a little God that I have to sit here and sit there. I'm glad I don't got a little God that I had to carve out of a rock or carve out of some wood but I'm glad my God made me my God made man and my God still got all the power on my his power tonight for a few minutes tonight I ain't gonna brag on your power <laughs> what would we brag about <laughs> Brother Mike, what would we brag about our power? Would we brag about how just like that we could pull out in front of a car out here and our life gets snuffed out right on old Concord Road just like that? Would we talk about our power and our strength, Brother Jeremiah, how we could throw a blood clot before the night was over and wind up dead? Would we talk about our power, how sometimes we ain't even got enough money to be able to pay the bills and pay the problems of our life? I'd rather talk about a God that he ain't never been a day late he ain't never been a dollar short I'd like to talk about a God that he ain't old and he ain't dying I'd rather talk about a God that ain't been elected and he won't be impeached and he ain't stepping down I'd rather talk about a God that he ain't gonna step off the throne thank God for a God that's got all power tonight Watch your text with me tonight. Watch your text with me tonight. Thank God for a God that's got all power. Amen, he does. I think too often, I think too often we have too little a view of our God's power. I think too often we let our problems take up all of the view of our sight instead of letting the power of our God take up our view. I think tonight we wouldn't worry about things we worry about if we leaned on his power more. 
I think tonight we wouldn't get upset about things we get upset about if we leaned on his power more. I think tonight we wouldn't fall to Amalek as often as we do like the preacher said if we stopped leaning on our power and started leaning on his power tonight. I got several things to say. Watch your text. Bible study. Watch your text here tonight. I'm preaching on. I hope you figured it by now. He has power. He has power. Notice that. Notice this is just introduction. Let me just throw this out to you real quick. Introduction. We'll give you the three points of our message. Notice the demonstration of his power. The demonstration of his power. Verse 19 said it was exceeding great power. And verse 19 said it was mighty power. And watch how he demon. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Brother Jack ain't had no idea what I was preaching tonight. <laughs> Woo! He got, y'all, y'all got up there, choir, and got to singing resurrection power. Watch how God demonstrated his power. Verse 20. Which he wrought, he demonstrated it. He showed it. How did he show his exceeding great power? How did he show his mighty power? How did he demonstrate his power? Verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. You say, how did God demonstrate his power 2,000 years ago? His son hung on a cross, drew his last breath, and was put in a tomb. And Brother James, this world and the powers of this world thought they had him. But on the third day, the stone rolled. He got up and he walked out victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He's got resurrecting power tonight. He's got enough power to call the dead out of the grave. And he didn't just get out of the grave, Brother Roger. He didn't just get out of the grave. That Bible said he brought him all the way up to the right hand and set him at the right hand. I'm talking about a God that can die. I'm talking about a God that can get up. And then I'm talking about a God that can go up and set at the right hand and live for you and for me tonight watch the demonstration watch the demonstration verse 21 watch the demonstration verse 21 he raised him from the dead set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places verse 21 far above (laughs) far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet (laughs) and gave him to be head over all things to the church you say what kind of demonstration did he have he didn't just lay in the grave get up three days later and go up but there's not a you, did you read what I said in verse 21? Brother Kevin, there's not a power in this world. The principalities, the powers, the might, the dominion, and every big name that's named in this world, there ain't one of them that he's not above it. There's not one of them he's not over it. There's not one of them he's not on top of it. That's the kind of God I serve tonight. Watch it, just, just simple little introductory outline, simple introductory outline, demonstration of his power. Then we see the duration of his power. How long, how, how long Brother Travis, this power going to last? I mean, you know, that Energizer Bunny, he goes pretty good, and he keeps going and going until finally he doesn't run out of battery power. How long does this power last? Well, watch, 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 verse 21, watch it, did you read it? Far above all principality, power, might, dominion, verse 21, every name that is named, here, 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 here. <laughs> How long's the duration of this power? Brother John, not only in this world, <laughs> but his, his power's out of this world. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. How long is this power of our great God going to last? It ain't just going to last as long as this mud ball lasts. It's going to go to the new heaven and the new earth. And when we get to that one, he'll still be ruling. He'll still be reigning. And he'll still have all the power. 
this world hates, this world resists, this world denies the power of God. <laughs> but his power's going to outlast them. Because they ending with this world. His power's going to go on into the next one. <laughs> Duration of his power, demonstration of his power. You say, that's a blessing. All right, praise the Lord. But what's that do for me? Glad you asked. Here's the message tonight. I mean, that's great. I'm glad he demonstrated it. I'm glad it goes on and it endures. But preacher, what does that do for me as a 2023 Christian living, fighting the world, the flesh, and devil like the preacher preached about this morning? We not only see the demonstration of his power, the duration of his power, but I would like for you to notice the direction of his power. Notice which way this power is directed. Don't miss it. Our text, verse 19. Watch which way it's directed. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? <laughs> All that power y'all been excited about for the last 15 minutes? I'm about to lose my blessed mind. All that resurrection power? All that power above the principalities and powers? It is directed in my way. He has pointed that power toward me. And if you're born again tonight, God has deposited. God has directed. God has pointed his power in your life tonight. towards, look who the power is directed towards, his greatness of his power to usward who believe. This awesome, unbelievable power is at work, Brother Udi, in my life. Now, I know, I know you don't believe it. I know you sit there because it's hard for me to believe too, y'all. It's hard for me to believe that right here where I stand, 39-year-old male that's got problems like y'all got problems and burdens like y'all got problems. Sometimes it's hard to believe that all that great power I just got done preaching about is available to me. But didn't I just read to you, Brother Jack, where it's available to you? It, there ain't a person that believes and born again in here that that power... So, so listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Don't miss this, don't miss this. Stop telling me that you can't overcome your unfaithfulness. If that kind of power is available to you. Why are you fearful if that power is available to you? Why are we unstable if that power is available to us? Why do we allow things to bother us that are inconsequential if that kind of power is available to us? I mean, we thank God he's got that power, but I just showed you that he ain't just, he has put it in your lap. So because this power has been directed towards us, what does that mean? How does this exceeding great power help us? I'm going to show it to you. There's three points in this message, and there's three portions of the text I want to show you. How does, sister, you sit here tonight and you say, preacher, I got to get up in the morning, and I got to go out there and face that world. And I'm burdened, and I fight. And I... Brother, you got to get up in the morning, and you got to go face a, a world that's against you. Burdens of life, trouble in your family, trouble in your finances, trouble in your physical health. How can I attribute that power? What does it do for me where I'm living at? I'm glad you asked. I want to show it to you and we're done. Let me say, number one, this power, his power is greater than who we contend with. <laughs> his power is greater than who we contend with. Look who we contend with. Look at chapter 2, verse 2. Watch chapter 2, verse 2. We're going to walk through here. We're going to use our Bible tonight. Chapter 2, verse 2. Watch what it said. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power. See, the devil's got some power, but he ain't got all power. Said according, we used to walk according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. 
among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, according to verse 2 and 3 that I just read to you, Satan's power. That's what we're looking at. That was Satan's power, the prince of the power there. Satan's power, Brother Steve, used to work, Brother Garrett, in us. Didn't it? His power worked in your life. There it was. But now that we're saved, his power no longer works in us. Satan's power works against us. Watch chapter 6 with me. Watch chapter 6 with me tonight. We're going to need some kind of power to combat the one who contends with us. Chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Not your power, his power. Watch, I'm talking about it's greater than who we contend with. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Don't miss verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, watch what we're wrestling against. Y'all, it's bigger than just the Chinese, the Russians. Al-Qaeda, Hamas, crazy nuts that are on psychotropic drugs that run around with AR-15s and start blowing people away. Half of us thought that was coming this morning. That big boom that went off ever what that was. Man, we thought the, the main shooter had done showed up here. But you really, he'd have been dead, praise God. But you realize, do you realize tonight what we're fighting is much more sinister and dangerous than that? Y'all, if we was just fighting somebody that we could grab hold to, I, I, I've, I've watched some of you fellers in action. If we was fighting somebody with flesh and blood, son, I've watched some of you fellers in action. I'd put y'all up against them. Hey, sick them. <laughs> I'd feel pretty secure. But y'all, we ain't fighting people we can just grab a hold of, throw them in an arm bar, full Nelson, half Nelson, choke, slam them on the ground, break their neck, shoot them in the head, stab them in the back. We ain't talking about somebody like that. Look what we're fighting. Look what we're contending with, y'all. Against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now I want y'all to hear me. I'm no conspiracy theorist. <laughs> y'all that was in Sun y'all that was in Sunday school this morning says, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no conspiracy theorist, but I will say this. There are bigger entities at work in this world than you think there is. Y'all, you listen to me according to verse 12. I just read it to you. Inspired scripture, Brother Keith. King James Bible. I read King James Bible. And according to that right there, there's things that are in this world, that are running this world, and ruling around in this world, that, brother, it's more dark and sinister than you imagine or believe. I'm telling you, there are darker, more sinister forces at work in this world. And they're out to get you. This ungodly stuff, Brother Jack, in our world that we see. This ungodly stuff going on in our world, Brother Skip. Surely nobody in here thinks this is just, this is just you know, by accident or it's just because people are wicked. Oh, no, 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 no. There's something big behind it. Surely you don't think all this trans and LGBTQ and... Abortion and all this stuff moving around in the Middle East and stuff happening in Russia and things coming against our country. and all that. Surely you can see it's, it's deeper than just some man or some woman. There are big forces at work behind it. I mean, there are back door, back deal things, Brother Charlie, going on that if we had purview to see into that realm, we would all be scared to death tonight. It ain't just politics. It ain't just regimes. It ain't just higher offices. There is an active destroyer of your soul that is out to ruin this world for his own purpose. Damn sinners to hell. Mess up the churches of the living God. And can I bring it down even a little tighter? 
These things that I'm reading about, they're not just up there in Congress, and they're not just over in the Middle East, and they're not just over in Ukraine. They ain't just over in Hollywood. They're out to get your home. Hey, mama! They're out to ruin your children and their minds. Hey, daddy! They're out. I'm talking about these big forces. They're out to drive a wedge between you and your wife and wind y'all up in divorce court and your children sown to the wind. They're out to get into the church and mess up the glorious things that God does among his people. They're out to get our children and our young people and mess up their purity and mess up their minds. I'm telling and li- listen, listen to me. You say, preacher, what's keeping this at bay? I mean, these principalities, powers, rules. I'm going somewhere with this. Don't miss this. Talking about we got greater power than the one we contend with. Say, preacher, what's keeping it from just closing in? Why don't the devil and all these great powers and principalities, why don't they just go ahead and close in and just wipe us out? I know why. I know why. It's because we got the Second Amendment and we still got guns. Lost your mind. I'm for it. I'm 2A all the way. You ain't getting my guns. I'm with Charlton Heston from my cold dead hands. But if you think for even one millisecond that what's keeping the powers of darkness at bay from ruining this church, ruining your home, and wrecking what's left of our country is because you got guns, you've lost your mind. If you think what's keeping these powers at bay is the Republicans and Mike Johnson up at you, you crazy. If you think what's keeping this thing at bay is because we got a mighty military, and I thank God for our military. Y'all know what a military-minded individual I am, but that ain't it. Look who we're contending with. Verse 12, principalities. Don't miss this. Please don't miss it. You say, why do you keep reiterating it? Because I'm fitting to show you something. (laughs) Principalities. Powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual weakness in high places. You say, preacher, that's dis- you've almost now discouraged me from where you had encouraged me. I'm walking around looking for all the dark cloud and the shoe to drop. Don't. You say, why? Because all this stuff we contend with, Brother David, yeah. go back to chapter 1 and look at verse 20, 21. Look at 121. All this stuff you contend with. Watch where it is in relation to your power. My power is, verse 21, (laughs) far above all them principalities. Far above all them powers. Far above that might. Far above that dominion. Verse 22, it's all under his feet. You say, what should that do for me? It should let you know and give you confidence that yeah, there's darkness in the world. And yeah, they'd wipe us all out if they could. But what keeps the forces of hell at bay? What keeps the darkness from crashing around? Is my power set at the right hand of the Father and he's way up higher than the dark powers of this world. He's way up higher than the principalities and they can do nothing without his permission. They can't draw breath. They can't make a move without that power giving them permission and I can sleep well at night knowing that I can fight and I can contend with this world because greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world somebody bigger than them is on my side keep on preaching keep on praying keep on praising keep on witnessing keep on raising your children for God God's power is on it and it works you say but all that other power is against us yeah but his power is The military fellas in here, y'all know this. They say whoever's got the high ground, Brother Noah, wins. <laughs> the fella fighting from the high ground got the advantage. Y'all, that Bible said, my Savior, he's got the high ground. 
Brother, he's sitting way up higher and looking way down low. And his power is much greater and it's all under his feet. How can we contend against what's going on in this world? His power. His power. Let me move on hurriedly and say this. Not only do we see his power is greater than who we contend with, but look at chapter 3. His power is greater than our complications. His power is greater than your complications or my complications. Watch what your text said. Watch this. Paul is, is talking about how God dumped this dispensation of the grace of God for these Gentiles in his lap. He's the apostle to the Gentiles. That these things which he's preaching about the body of Christ, it was hid in ages and other times, but now it's been revealed. Look at verse 6. Start in verse 6. Watch watch this. Chapter 3, verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Verse 7. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. God is working in my life with his power to do what he's called me to do. Uh Uh-oh, but verse 8, watch his complications. Paul's blown away. Watch Paul's complications. Unto me. Paul said, I can't believe. Verse 7, he said, I was made a minister. God gave me this gift of grace. God's effectual working of his power, verse 7, is on me. And then Paul starts out verse 8 and says, unto me. Unto me. Who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Paul says, Lord, I can't do this. Paul says, Lord, why me? You know... You know my, don't miss this, I'm talking about his power is bigger than your complications. Lord, you know my past. That's what he's saying right here. Brother Donald, he's saying unto me, I'm less than the least of all saints. That's like when he said, I'm the chief of sinners. He said, I'm way down in the basement. Lord, me? You, you know, you know about me. Go to 1 Timothy. Hold your place there. Go to 1 Timothy with me and look at chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Watch what Paul says. This is what he's talking about when he's blown away that God would use him. When he says, unto me whom less than the least of all saints. This is the things that Paul's talking about, these complications that Paul can't believe it. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 11. 1 Timothy 1 11. Watch what your Bible said. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me. His power is doing this. For that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Watch. Watch his complications. Who was before a blasphemer? We got any of them in here before you got saved? A persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which was in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern of them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Paul is, this is what he's saying in Ephesians 3 and here in 1 Timothy chapter 1. He's saying I just cannot believe that God... I murdered Christians. I cussed the name of Jesus. I persecuted them. I did everything I could in my self-righteous wickedness to walk against God. God, why me? I'm, I'm not qualified for this job. You can't use me. You can't do this with my life. But he said in Ephesians, that affects your working of his power. (laughs) I'm telling you tonight, 
His power is big enough to take the injurious, blaspheming Saul. His power is great enough uh, to take the filthy, wicked, vile, self-righteous Saul and pick that old boy up out of that lifestyle and wash him in his blood, put him in his family, commission him to preach, and then send him all over that world preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ. And tonight you walk up in here and you say, "Uh uh-uh, God could couldn't use my life. God couldn't do nothing with my life unto me. I'm the least of all the saints. Preacher, I got complications. Preacher, you don't know my past. Preacher, you don't know where I've been. Preacher, you don't know what I've done. Preacher, if you'd only seen me before God got me, you wouldn't say God could use me. I'm here to tell you about a power tonight that's bigger than you think it is. I'm talking about a power that can take the vilest of the vile, the most wretched of the wretched the most wicked of the wicked and save them and then put them in the ministry and use them for the glory of God. Don't tell me about your inability. Don't tell me that you can't. I'm talking about a power that God can help you and God can use you and God can touch you and God can bless your life if you will let him tonight. I'm talking about a God that can take families that the world looked at and said, they losers. And then God can clear them off a spot, stick them all on a church bench and use them for his glory. Say, who could do something like that? That, that, that? That's reform. No, 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 that ain't reform. You say, that's religion. No, 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 that ain't religion. That's redemption. And that is the radical power of God tonight. If God can make a world out of nothing, and he did. And Brother Hunter, if God can make a man out of dust, and he did then don't tell me that God, sister, can't take your life and use it for his glory. Don't tell me, sir, that God can't use your family. Don't tell me God can't use you on your job, use you at your house, use you in this church. I'm telling you there's a God that specializes in doing that. You say, why would God want me? I'm the least of all the least. Why would God want me? I'm the chief of sinners. He wants you so that he can demonstrate his power, so that you don't get the glory so that you don't get the honor so that you don't get the praise and so people say look what God has done why does God why does God take the juvenile delinquent that caused everybody hell and problems through all of his teenage years and the wild man that nobody could do anything with and put him in the teen department leading teenagers for the glory of God. Because <laughs> that ain't his power. So, somebody else's power. <laughs> why, does, why does God take the redneck from Louisiana who ain't got nothing going for him and all messed up and life shot all to hell and bring him down to Houston, Texas and then call him to preach and put him in the ministry and then all of his kids living for God. One of them ended up being a missionary and now one of them over here working at the church. One of them singing for the glory of God. The other one married to a preacher. You say, why does God do something like that? Because God gets all the glory for it. He don't get none. You don't get none. God gets all of it. And tonight I'm telling you, if you just hit an altar tonight and say, God, everything I got is yours. God, I can't, but you can. I got a lot of problems in my past. I got a lot of complications in my life. I got a lot of problems and things. But Lord, I'm bringing it all to you. And I'm trusting your power is greater than my complication. And you can do with me what I can't do with myself. I'm, I'm through, I'm through. Chapter 3, we find his power is greater than who we contend with. His power is greater than our complications. I like this one as good as any of them and we're done. Chapter 3, verse 20. <laughs> this is a good, almost can't even say it to you. <laughs> Lastly, his power is greater <laughs> 
than what we can comprehend. <laughs> His power is greater, Brother Zach, than what I can even comprehend tonight. Say, so you've done a fair good job describing it. I ain't even touched the hem of the garment. I really wished I could have described it to y'all, Brother Bill, but I did such a poor job, Brother Ken, of describing the power of God tonight. It's pure pathetic. See, all that hollering and sweating and digging through the scriptures you've done is pathetic. When it comes to his power, it is. It's beyond, Brother Foster, what I can comprehend. See where you get that? 320. Ephesians 320. I love this verse. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, this is what it's according to. According to the power that worketh in us. Y'all, I don't know about you. I got a pretty wild imagination. Brother Hunter, my book just said that he's able, according to that power, according to that power, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. You say, he ain't got that kind of power. I just read to you where it did. His power is able to go above and beyond what I can fathom or comprehend. You say in light of the fact that his power is beyond comprehension, what should I do? Ask big. Brother Dan, God, help us. Asking God, talking to God like we think we're talking to some welfare God. Like we think we're talking to some God who, who, who looks like he's shriveled up like, 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 I mean, death sucking on a fig newton. Like, like, God, forgive us for thinking that when we're praying, we're talking to some God that's got a walker with tennis balls on the bottom of it and has to walk in and say, can I help you? God, forgive us that when we talk to you and when we believe you for things and when we think about how great you are, we think that you're some anemic weak God. Oh, no, 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 no. Absolutely not. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Some of y'all sitting in here tonight, you don't give up on praying for some of them people in your life. You know why? You didn't see no results as fast as you wanted results and you think God's not able. <laughs> Can I just say it like this? Not the, look at your life, sister. Look at your life, brother. Did you, did you ever think that years ago, did you ever think that looking where you are now, that God could have ever done that? Did you ever think sitting way back out there somewhere that there was a God that could work things out for your good and his glory and here you'd be sitting tonight and look what God has done. You say, I never dreamed it. No, you didn't because it was exceeding abundantly above all you could ask or think. You didn't even ask for it. You didn't even think it. But God was doing things you couldn't ask or think. I'm glad when I'm weak in faith, he ain't weak tonight. I'm glad when these things, Brother Garrett, I ain't even praying for. And I don't even know I need. There's a God in heaven that he's working it out anyways. He's a blessing anyways. He's doing things I can't see. And down the road, I look back and say, look what God did. How's it, how's it go, Brother Kent? How's it go, Brother Kent? God woke me up this morning <laughs> with blessings untold. <laughs> Faithful, loving family in a house that we call home. The promise of eternal life because of Calvary. A peace that settled in my heart. 
this is the day that he saved me. And I just say, look what God has done. I stand amazed to think of his love. And I don't deserve it. There's no way I could earn it. Eternity will not be long enough to thank God for all he's done. How's it going, Miss Monica? He's answered prayers. I've prayed for you. Woo! I'm getting blessed by my own preaching. He's answered prayers. I've prayed for years. Never once has he failed me. He made a way when all I saw was impossibilities. I'm talking about a God that look what he's done. I ain't preach nothing tonight about look what you've done, look what I've done, look what the church has done, look what they've done. But tonight all we can do is bow our unworthy hands, lift our unworthy hands, and say because of the power of God, because of the power of God, because of the exceeding greatness of His mighty power, look, look, look at your life. because of his power it's all because of his power it's all because of his power let's all stand tonight maybe you say preacher I sure need some of that power in my life for my the things I contend with the, the complications in my life things I can't even comprehend Don't you come ask him for his power. Stop leaning on yours. I sure need his power. We all do. When's the last time you come ask him for some help and some power? Father, I pray you'd bless the simple little old message from your word. I tried to be faithful to give your people what I felt like you gave me. I pray that you might use it to the glory of God. Help us to seek your power. God, you said it's available to us. You said it's given to us for who believe. (laughs) Unto me, whom less than the least of all saints. Who are we, God, that you would let us have part in your power? Boy, we sure do need it in a wicked world like we live in, God. Pray you'd help tonight now. Help your people to see the need for this. Help your people to stop leaning on their own power. Help us to quit being fearful over things that your power has control over. Help us tonight, I pray in Jesus' name. If you need to come, you can.